Just like dedicated MP3 players, it seems that GPS units have become less and less popular with time, largely because smartphones have matured and they can now do so much, including using Google Maps for very accurate navigation. However, there's still a handful of reasons why you may want to consider getting a dedicated GPS unit, which we'll be taking a look at in this video. For one, it comes pre-included with a lot more maps inside that doesn't require additional downloads, doesn't require you to be connected to the internet at all times, and can save on that data cost. Secondly, it still may have a better kind of antenna reception for dedicated GPS purposes compared to a phone where the primary emphasis will just be on making calls, connecting to, let's say, Wi-Fi as opposed to the GPS chipset necessarily. Uh, also, in the version that we'll be taking a look at today, it has a much larger display than your typical smartphone. This is a 7-inch GPS unit that actually runs on uh, Windows CE and is also very affordable. It doesn't come with an official branding, but you can find this on Gearbest for around $45, which is, again, not much money at all if you are trying to pick up a new GPS unit today. So here are some basic features on the side. It has an FM radio, it can read back text, it can play back music, MP4 players, things like that. So even if you don't use it all the time for GPS navigation as a backup kind of media player or video player, or a small tablet, it uh, certainly has its use cases at only $45. In the box, you have a very generic seeming user manual. The screen resolution is uh, 480 by 800, so not very uh, you know, super high res, but it should still work. It uses mini USB for charging, so that's a slightly older standard, but still works nonetheless. You have a car charger in the box. There is a uh, stand which uh, clips onto the back of the tablet and has two features. First of all, it has a kickstand, which allows you to watch videos when propped onto a table. Second of all, it also has an integrated stylus so you can pull out and interact with the touchscreen display when you are in the window. Windows CE menus. It also has these uh, little holes that's uh, used for the uh, stand here for the suction cup that can be attached onto a windshield for holding the device into place. And finally, we just have the GPS itself. So sign this off out of the packaging here, it, it is indeed a very large GPS unit. And uh, again, it resembles, in my opinion, something like the iPad mini or an iPad or an iPhone of yesteryear. And on the side here, we have access to the ports, mini USB for charging, the speaker, micro SD for memory expansion. There's also a standard headphone port. The top features the dedicated power key, one of the clips for the stands. And on the back here, this is another loudspeaker along with uh, some very basic information branded. It comes with eight gigs of built-in storage and part of that is taken up by the operating system and also the maps which have been pre-included. Uh, depending on what region you live in, you can actually select the corresponding version uh, in the links down below. So they have uh, the same model, but it's preloaded with either maps of North America, South America, Asia, Europe, so on and so forth. So let's just tapping on the power key for a few seconds and see if there's any juice remaining. It says MediaTek, so very interesting. It's probably using some type of MediaTek chipset uh, underneath the hood for the OS experience. And we have, again, a menu interface that's very similar to iOS in the early days. There's a time information, battery status as well, and then we can slide back and forth between the menus. Um, a lot of apps on here which are not just for GPS navigation, but uh, again, more similar to something like on a media player or an MP4 player. There's access to music, there's videos, there's a photo, um, ebook, flash, so it can play back a few flash games and apps. There's even dedicated games on here, although they are very basic, such as Snake. Um, so a pretty fun game. The speakers on first impression are insanely loud, which uh, may not be such a bad thing considering you want clear and precise directions for navigation, but there is no volume rocker directly on the sides here, so you probably have to dig into the menus if you want to turn down the sound. All right, so let's go out of the screen here. And again, some of these other uh, basic games include what looks like Chinese chess. There's also Boxman, so you have to push all the boxes into these circles to win the level. Some very basic games on here, and you can obviously download more if you want to by installing them onto a memory card or connecting it to a computer. Quickly cycling through some of these other features, calculator, wow, so this looks very similar to iOS. Uh, calculators, especially with the early iPhones, and tapping them back is actually what takes you back there, so kind of clever. Uh, there's also a unit converter, again, menus interface very similar to iOS. Language support, there's uh, many languages out of the box, and that's the FM radio. Next, uh, here is the volume adjustment, so we can turn this up down a little bit, and the screen tap sound, we can actually make it a little bit softer as well. Basic time and date, so this, again, has a very iOS-like feel that allows us to change the time settings very quickly here. And uh, very interestingly, finally, finally on the bottom here is what we have that's called Windows CE. And if I tap on this, this immediately transitions into the 
Windows CE experience, which uh, on first impression seems like something uh, such as let's say Windows uh, you know XP or Windows Vista, Windows 7, and uh, it has all these desktop-like applications on the side, including a start menu that you can tap on to take a look at additional apps. So it's actually pretty cool. It's almost like a UMPC experience. The only limitation, of course, is that this particular model doesn't have Wi-Fi since um, it's basically just a GPS. But what it does have is built-in Bluetooth, so technically you can connect it to, let's say, a phone and then still have access to the internet. Or you can, um, again, connect it maybe by USB onto a converter of sorts into Ethernet and perhaps also connect it to internet without Wi-Fi necessarily. But very interestingly, there are a few other apps that are pre-installed on here. For instance, there's Word Viewer, there's also PowerPoint Viewer, and maybe Excel Viewer as well. So if you have an SD card or memory in here that is um, for presentations, for instance, you can actually tap on these apps and open them up, which is actually pretty cool. There's also Internet Explorer on here, even though it's not the best uh, browsing experience. And again, since uh, we don't have Wi-Fi, it's a little bit harder to browse or connect to internet right out of the box. But the application at least is on here. And you can see this is what the interface looks like. Definitely a very uh, kind of archaic UI experience by 2018 standards, but still kind of cool. And uh, when you're satisfied, you can actually exit out of this just by either tapping on suspend, or you can tap on this exit icon. And what that does is actually turn off the device. Uh, and so the next time that you want to go into the GPS interface, you have to tap on the power key again. So that is one potential downside. If you want to transition back and forth between the Windows CE and the GPS interface here, you have to actually physically turn the device off and turn it back on again. It's not really a seamless transition that's a keeps the power on at all times. But otherwise, it actually is a pretty cool uh, kind of like secondary feature uh, as a result of running on Windows CE and this being really a skin that's running on top of that OS experience. So on the left here, we also have a few tabs that uh, you can tap on to uh, either hide the menus or put it back, uh, back again, access to uh, MP3 music at a quick key, and also access to navigation at a quick click. I can also change, let's say, the wallpaper in the background just by swiping through some of these uh, presets. So if you want to change it from the black into a full color image, that's also possible. So say I like this particular image, you can see the background has now been changed. Now the 7-inch panel here is using just a regular TFT LCD display. It's not IPS, which means that viewing angles are a little bit weak, and uh, the fact that it does have a little bit of glare coming from a plastic display also means that uh, visibility may be slightly challenging if you are in really bright environments. But since it'll mostly be in your car, uh, I think that with a reasonable amount of shade, it should be fine in terms of being able to see the images without too many problems. Um, the screen itself is also quite sensitive, as we are doing a quick hands-on testing so far. Um, I will say, though, that it is a resistive touchscreen, as you probably have guessed by the fact that it has a stylus. Uh, so it's not capacitive, not quite as lucid as on modern day smartphones, but it still is not that bad compared to older resistive uh, devices of yesteryear. It's still a lot more responsive than what I was expecting. All right, so going into the navigation interface, which is again the main selling point here, it will take a few seconds to completely boot. And uh, one of the biggest surprises in my testing with it so far is really how good the GPS antenna is. It was able to lock my position almost instantly. Even when you're indoors, you're able to very quickly find your position on a map, which is impressive. It's uh, especially great if you're also using it as a pedestrian GPS, which it actually has the mode to be. So you can ride a bike, you can use it when walking around in a new city, and and you're able to navigate your way around very easily as well. As you can see, we have full bars of reception, despite the fact that we're filming inside a uh, building right now. The interface is also surprisingly intuitive as well as touch uh, friendly. So all the icons are really large. You don't have to use a stylus to navigate around. And here's where you'll also find some more advanced settings for things like uh, configuring uh, routing options, such as avoiding traffic, um, highways, tolls, things like that, that you can select through under these menus. So to access that, just tap on the settings key down below. And you can see that panning around is actually very smooth and responsive. The map seems to be loading very quickly, so the MediaTek chipset seems to be more than sufficient for powering this thing up. I'm not really even sure if it has a quad-core chipset or not. Um, it's kind of hard to tell when I tried searching up the specific model number previously. Not too much information, but again, it is very responsive in this interface. I can tap on the compass that will automatically realign to the direction that I'm pointing at with the map. I can zoom in and out using these controls since pinch to zoom gestures aren't available. You have to uh, rely on using the keys on the side. This button here also changes the kind of a view back experience, whether you want a flat map looking from the bottom like this, or if you want a 3D map, which actually displays buildings and significant landmarks. 
So under destination, this is where you're able to type in, let's say, a points of interest, finding address, finding places uh, nearby. So for instance, if I tap on that, you can find by category, gas stations, parking, restaurants, accommodations, and it actually is uh, fairly easy to use. It's actually very quick to search through points of interest. Um, the map on here, I believe, is not necessarily 100% up to date because, again, it doesn't have Wi-Fi built on in. And this particular model, I believe, came out in late 2015, 2016. So let's do a very quick demo. I'm just going to tap into help and just uh, play back some of these quick clips that they have provided for us. The fir first one, which is just a casino in Las Vegas, and it's going to pretend that we are trying to go by car. And uh, you can see that this is what the interface is like. And again, the voice prompts themselves are indeed very clear and loud, even with the speakers at 50% right now. We can also see that uh, it displays uh, road information. Lives. So if there's uh, five highways, for instance, it's going to display which roads that you should be on in order to successfully go out. And it tells you your street name. Again, this is a 3D visualization of the building in the distance, significant landmarks, and tells you the arrival time as well. It's able to reroute your destination very quickly if you accidentally get lost, just because, again, the antenna reception is so strong, at least in the Seattle and San Francisco regions that I tested it out with so far. I had no real complaints. It was able to very quickly reroute me and get me to the correct places. And here's one last, last demo, but uh, showing a highway uh, use uh, scenario. So we are on a highway. You can see it shows off some cityscapes in the in the distance, and the visualization just resembles the road that you're in. So especially on bigger, longer highways, this is what you'll be seeing. And also the signs on the top kind of match what you'll be seeing as well as you are driving along, which is very helpful. And it smartly switches back and forth between these different types of visualizations, whether it's a regular map like you see here, or that's a highway visualization depending on what location you're on. So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of this uh, very generic 7-inch GPS unit is concerned. And again, I came out... Uh, came away feeling actually more impressed just because at only $45 I was very skeptical coming in and uh, seeing how it has a very large screen. I thought that maybe performance wouldn't be that great, but actually the antenna reception and the processor seems to handle these tasks very well. So for uh, navigation, whether it's by car or by foot, it all is uh, quite good. And the fact that you can choose your region to have uh, preloaded maps from the manufacturer is also very helpful. The interface isn't the most inspired thing in the world. And yes, I would have preferred maybe it's an Android operating system or a capacitive screen as opposed to a resistive screen. But uh, the fact that it has Windows CE is also kind of cool. If you want to kind of uh, hack around and play with it, you're, you might even be able to mod it and run some more advanced programs as well as uh, emulated games on here. So it really has many use cases apart from just being a GPS unit, from being a media player to having Bluetooth um, and doing some very light productivity as well. It reminds me a lot as a tablet with uh, also pretty decent battery life as well. So you can check out more details about this in the links down below. But for now, this has been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. This has been the 7-inch GPS unit.